What's up everyone, welcome to an episode of Spitting Venom, aka the Venom Vlog, and today we're going to talk about Ludwig Göransson's track listing for the Venom score, which was released online, and I have a link to MovieWeb down below that's going to have a list of all these tracks. So make sure if you're watching this video, there might be some spoilers because I am going to do a little bit of speculation. Some of this kind of shows you the structure of the movie in a way, like when we read them in order, you'll kind of see in your head how the movie will play out, and that might be spoilerish for you guys because you might want to not know when scenes take place. So if that's the case, please turn away now. Uh, but before you turn away, real quick, actually, let's give out this code so that you don't leave empty-handed, or at least one of you won't. Here's the code, boom, right there. First person to go to that website and put in the code will get a copy of Venom First Host number three, uh, brought to you by Marvel Comics, but also this code is from Golden Apple Comics. So big shout out to them. I also have a link to them down below, so make sure you check them out. Uh, that's where I buy a lot of my comic books here in Los Angeles, and they're a really great store and a place I used to work at before, so I'm a little biased, uh, but I do love them very much, and they treat me like family there, and they have some great comics. And now the store is surrounded by Venom posters, uh, at least for this month, uh, which is really cool. And so you probably saw that in one of my intro videos recently for first host number three review. All right, so now that we got that out of the way, I will say once again, this could contain spoilers and I am gonna do some speculation. So if you gotta go now, I understand completely and we will catch you in the next episode or you can come back and watch this after you see the film if you'd like. So without further ado, let's get into this. Uh, first, the track listing. And again, this is by Ludwig Gorenson. He was the one who did the score for Black Panther and now he's doing the score for this movie. And the tracks go as followed. Track one, space exploration. So I'm guessing we're going to get an opening of the movie and it's going to be, you know, looking in space. Uh, the Life Foundation is turning to the stars to look for a way for humanity to evolve that way and exist outside of Earth's atmosphere because according to Carlton Drake and trailers we've seen and everything in interviews uh, that he does not think Earth has a lot of time left. And so uh, in this regard, they're like, okay, we're ruining the ozone, we're ruining a lot of things that's making it inha uninhabitable for humans. So we need to find another place to go. So I'm guessing there's going to be some space exploration stuff. But then uh, track two is Symbiotes Arrive. And so that's interesting. So we haven't even got to like the Eddie stuff yet. So I'm wondering how much of the intro, if we're going to get right into Eddie, or if we're going to get the backstories of the symbiotes, which will be cool. Based off the track uh, listing here, looks like we're going full symbiote. Uh, and so the symbiotes arrive, and we heard in a IGN article, which we'll talk about in the next one, of how the symbiotes arrive. So again, in the next episode, we'll go over that stuff in episode 371. We're not going to do that here, though, because that does contain spoilers. Um, so we'll, uh, you know, we'll save that for the next video. Uh, then we have uh, track three, First Contact, which is probably them when they crash land. So, you know, we'll, you know that's in the trailer we saw. Um, and then maybe when Riot goes to, um, you know, the medic and then, you know, and attack somebody in that van or whatever. Uh, I think that's what's going to happen there with First Contact. Then we have Eddie's Blues. So it looks like we finally get into Eddie Brock and his life. Uh, then we have Eddie, uh, track five is called Run Eddie Run, which is great because I love that movie Run Lola Run. Uh, and so it reminded me of that. And I think this is when he's in the woods, maybe, and he's, like, on the run, you know, from whatever, uh, you know. Uh, so I guess he goes to the Life Foundation pretty early on, because uh, I'm guessing Eddie's blues is after the interview doesn't go well for him. Um, what's wrong with me? That's uh, track six, and I'm guessing that's when he's sick and taking pills. Track seven is Panic at the Bistro, uh, instead of Panic at the Disco. Track nine is called Self-Defense. Track ten is called Pedal to the Metal, so I'm guessing that's the motorcycle chase scene, uh, most likely. Uh, track 11, Eyes, Lungs, Pancreas. So right at the end of that chase scene, we get to see Venom for the first time. And again, I'm thinking this is probably around the middle of the movie. Uh, you know, typical origin story. You do the character, you show them in full costume, or you show them become the character around the 40 to 50 minute marker. So I'm thinking that's what's going to happen here. And uh, track 12 is called You Want Up with a question at the end. Uh, so I don't know what that's referring to. We'll find out, I guess, in the movie. Uh, track 13 is called Venom Rampage. Uh, so I guess Venom's just going to cut loose, and they got a, a track dedicated just to that, uh, which is great. So I'm curious to see, uh, you know, what kind of rampage is this the, you know, I can't imagine this is the apartment fight scene. I would imagine uh, humans such poor design, maybe that's part of the, uh, you know, uh, fight scene in the apartment. Uh, Venom Rampage, though, I, w I would love to see what happens with that. Um, track 14 is called Annie, I'm Scared. So obviously that's referring to Anne Wang, and I guess Eddie Brock worried about this new power, although he does ultimately enjoy having it and he thinks it serves a purpose. Uh, it's kind of a double-edged sword, uh, but it, it, at least this track shows that maybe there's some sympathy in there and some worry on Eddie Brock's part. Um, 15, a track dedicated just to us. It's called Parasite. Um, that's awesome. Uh, but yeah, that could also be the, uh, the Mrs. Chen sequence as well. So I thought that was going to be the stinger possibly at the end of the movie. 
looks like it's not. Maybe it's him accepting, you know, this this gift or curse or whatever it is and, and deciding to use it to help people. Uh, then we have track 16, which is called Unexpected Ally. And I saw, including this website, MovieWeb, they're theorizing that that could lead to, I mean, Spider-Man, it could lead other things. Obviously, uh, Spider-Man is not in this movie. Uh, we saw IGN even say that when they were on their set visit. They're like, yeah, there's no Spider-Man in this, so how do you tell Venom without Spider-Man? Uh, of course, they're talking about the origin. You know, Spider-Man's not directly involved in the origin. So I know some people out there are going to try to read between the lines and think that, you know, someone's going to still show up in this movie. A Spider-Man, maybe. Um, I, I guess I won't rule it out. Uh, but I don't personally think Unexpected Ally means that. I'm thinking Unexpected Ally is a human character. Um, either we're going to find out that Patrick Mulligan, who's dressed up as a doctor in one of the trailers, maybe we'll find out he's a cop and he decides to, you know, you know, reveal himself. And, you know, maybe he's a cop working undercover trying to find out about the life foundation he's dressed up as a like an MRI doctor or something or just like a lab assistant or something either we'll find something like that out or the unexpected ally is referring to Anne Wang because maybe in the Annie I'm scared scene she walks away from Eddie and she's like I want nothing to do with this and maybe the fact that she comes back to help him in the end in that scene where we see her running you know down the hallway maybe that's her coming back to be an ally to Eddie um, so you know that could be it too so I'm thinking it's probably a human character and not so much um, you know, like a, another superhero or anything. Uh, then the track 17 is called Battle on the Launch Pad, so we kind of figured that. Uh, and we, we will talk about the launch pad and we'll talk about the symbiotes and how they came to Earth and everything. We're going to talk about that in the IGN video coming up next. Uh, so again, that's going to contain major spoilers. This one had some spoilers and then me speculating. Uh, but I would say the next video will probably actually have story spoilers. So if you don't want those, make sure you know you avoid the next episode where we talk about IGN Day 3 coverage. Uh, and then the last track is called You Belong With Us. Uh, and so a lot of people, again, I saw speculating online what that could mean. Um, you Belong With Us. And uh, I don't know. Could be anything. Could be the, you know, like the, the birth of carnage. Uh, it could be the fact that, uh, you remember in Planet of the Symbiotes, Eddie, at the end, makes a conscious decision with the suit to destroy the other symbiotes that are around. And that's hard because the symbiote is like, hey, look, I'm killing my race to save your race. And it's a big decision, uh, you know, for something like me. And, I, and it's a hard one to make. And so they, they come to that revelation at the end of Planet of Symbiotes, and that's how Eddie in the suit saved the day, is by killing all the symbiotes that invaded Earth and getting them to kill themselves. He, which is even worse, because Eddie Brock, being someone who has you know attempted to commit suicide before, he had to use that against the symbiotes, and he, they forced the symbiotes to go crazy and kill themselves. And that was a big move for Eddie and the symbiote to make, but ultimately it was them deciding to become one. They bonded in a way that they hadn't bonded before, and it was like a complete bond. Uh, and to me, that was kind of like a nice bookend to the David Michelini run on the character. Uh, and so it could be something along those lines, too, because they did say this movie is not just Lethal Protector influenced, but also Planet of the Symbiotes influenced. So you guys let me know what you think of this track listing down below. Uh, I'm curious to see, you know, what some of your thoughts are. If you have any different you know, theories and speculations than I do, let me know down below. And again, probably mild spoilers if you made it this far. I already warned you at the beginning, but maybe in the comments there might be some too. So, uh, you know, avoid looking down there as well until after you see the film, which luckily is only just under or just over two weeks away from now. I think we're about 15 days away from the film, and I'm very excited. I'm sure you guys are too. So let me know that down below as well. Thanks for watching my show. As always, like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff. We'll see you in the future. Peace.